morning everyone. I'm popping in with something a little bit different today. Um, at the weekend uh, I was experimenting with some vintage papers. We were making these at the sewing group on um, Friday and I'm sure many of you have seen these cones made in the past and they're just adorable aren't they that they're really really lovely they're, they're quick and easy to do and i thought i'm going to try doing it with some vintage paper this one here is old matte paper from manchester from the 1990 and then just think normal vintage book paper i've specifically not uh, inked them up because i wanted the contrast in color and it worked out beautifully so i thought i'd pop in just to show you how to do these because i thought it'd be something so pretty and if you did the smaller ones because this egg here is the eight centimeter one if you did the smaller ones which are about six you could actually hang these off you know your journal off the spine bit where you would normally put a, a tassel or you can put them on your tree, whatever you really design, decide. But they're absolutely gorgeous. I apologise for the shadows again, but it's just been so dark and dull over here. Um, you know, it really is an impossible situation. I just want to give a shout out for Kentucky and the surrounding areas because I know you have been hit like hell with the storms at the moment. Obviously, we've had them here. Um, and just prayers to you all and hope that you're all safe. Um, Anyway, egg, polystyrene egg. Now, Amazon do them, and most craft places do them. I should imagine you can get them in Hobby Lobby and all those sort of places you get over in America. Really, really easy to do. Now, the, how you, and these pins, now these are the uh, sequin and bead pins, not the dressmaking ones. You can use dressmaking ones, it's not a problem. These are just a lot smaller. If you look, uh, a lot smaller than what your normal dressmaking pins are but um, I did use dressmaking pins on this one um, because that's what they had at the hub at the time um, so it's, it's really choice um, if you're going to be using uh, material and you use something like Lurex um, it's quite hard to get the pins through on some of the fabrics so it is better to use the dressmaking pins but choice is up to you love now you start off by just covering the top with a piece of paper or fabric whichever you're using at the time and you just pin it on there's no there's no thought patterns in this it's it's just a simple process of pinning and going round as you go and once you start doing these you'll be addicted and you'll make loads and loads and loads they're one of those crafts that look so complicated and if you spent hours and hours on doing them, but they're not, they're really, really simple. And this one's gonna be going to Rachel. Uh, Rachel, uh, Rachel Bella Crafts, most of you know Rachel, Rachel Waters. She's got a little um, thing going on in her group that you make a handmade decoration for her tree her son decided on this which i think is an absolutely brilliant idea and once she gets the ornaments on the tree she's then going to have a draw um i think it's just a really really clever thing to do now all you get is a these are two by two two inches by two inches piece of paper fabric is exactly the same you can use a mix of two by twos and then smaller sizes. It's entirely up to you. The two by twos are the easiest to do. And you literally just foam corner to corner, corner to corner, and you get your triangle. It is not the hardest thing to do, <laughs> is it? And then on the start, this is, this is the only time, it's a little bit tricky to get them in place. On the start, it, they sort of look a little bit messy at first and the way I found it easiest to do is to find like the center and get your 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 point into the center there and then pin your pin either side now most people go right the way round. they do, do, do like the four they just go round in a circle I found this way gives you a neater one 
so you know marry your pins up that's it that one goes on there if you do them opposites for some reason it just sits on better and it gives you a much much neater comb at the end of it and obviously you just decide what papers you're going to use Once you've got these four in place, you're, you're off, you know, it's easy to get them going. If you have a trouble in pushing these pins in, you know, sometimes you'll get one that just won't go in. I have a pair of scissors and I just use the, the end of the scissors to push the head of the pin in. That's something I've been doing for many, many years on, on dressmaking and things like that. I've got a pin. Whoops, it's dropping it. Well, it's lovely and quiet today. We had them doing the road works outside the window for a week last week. They've been road resurfacing here. It's only a little, quiet little avenue, but they've been resurfacing the road, and oh my days, the noise. That one needs to cut up a tiny bit. The noise was just unreal. And you couldn't hear yourself think. Um, a shout out to all those who are doing the dailies with our Tracy. Oh my goodness, you girls are amazing. I've seen some incredible work. You girls have just really taken a hold of this. And any who don't know about the December dailies with Tracy, she's got the December dailies. She's doing a whole collection of December dailies. Um, let me just show you how to get this one in. Right, so you've got your two points. And you're going to come in here. Right, so you come down about half a centimetre. And it will go in there, this one. Yeah, well Tracy, what she's doing is you're, there's only going to be about three uh, files a day available. Because as she's putting them up, she's deleting them. Because obviously at the end of all this, she will be having um, the whole kit. It will go up for sale in Etsy. There. Um, but the, the work the girls are doing is incredible. It's inspiring. It really is. And Tracy, I don't know how she's managed to keep going. She's just, you know, 13 has gone up today. And I am amazed at where her, all her ideas are coming for a start off. I mean, I've done the December dailies and my days it's it's hard work it really is if you're doing posts every day it really is hard work and you don't realize how hard work it is until you actually start doing them it's the trying to be inspired and thinking of different ways of doing things and coming up with new ideas and you have to get into a really really amazingly good routine to do it you really do not like me last year when I did what I was doing a five days off and a, and a 12 days off last year <laughs> not sure how I managed to keep going on that one now once you've got these in place as you can see the dark there can't you can see the darker of the matte paper and the lighter of the vintage paper all you do is you just literally keep going you keep the same color under the colour before. So where you've already done a vintage map page, which is what I'm using, I mean, obviously you can use anything you like, use coloured paper or anything. But I thought the, the nice idea about the vintage paper is they just look so lovely. Because what I'm going to do is um, my close, I'm just in the middle of decorating my close at the moment. The close, that one needs to come down just a tiny bit. When I say close, it's an entryway. Um, this used to be an old police house and uh, the stairs, if you look at the stairs, the stairs are the old police stairs, you know, the really old fashioned police stairs. And you can see when you, when you know what it is. And I'm just decorating that now, because then that, you know, you have a main front door, you then come into the close, which is like the stairwell. And then my door is at the top. Um, 
So I'm just decorating that in the moment and I thought these would be lovely on a branch. You know, you could spend them from a nice branch and put them in the window down there. Oops. So sometimes you just hit that bit that just does not want to go in. And if you decide to do alternate sizes, it's exactly the same process, exactly the same. Now, if you're using fabric, you know fabric sort of moves about. It's easier to, oh, that doesn't want to go in at all, that one. Uh, with fabric, it's easier to, to make a wee template, make a square template and then draw on like that. Um, I've got my little templates in here. It's it's more accurate you think it's going to be at more accurate just running your ruler up and coming across but it doesn't because fabric will move about but having a wee template and just drawing around that and then moving it up and drawing around works better you get a you get it more you get an evener square evener my english not very good today is it? <laughs> but the square looks better it looks um you know and when you fold it if you've got a really good, precise square, you're going to get a better look on your egg. Because that's what they are, eggs. If you want to look these up on Amazon, you type in polystyrene egg shapes and they come up. And the balls are there and all the other different types of polystyrene shapes that you can get. But when you're on there, look for the size because sometimes they don't tell you the size that they are and you think oh that's a good price and then you look oh gosh they're tiny you know so do go and look for the size as i say these are eight centimeters which is uh sort of about two and three quarter inches roughly and my mum many years ago made it made these um for Easter. She made a lot of them up for Easter. She made Easter ones. And it doesn't matter what this bottom bit looks like because as you gradually put the paper over, you're not going to see the mess. It just builds up so quickly, this does. You need approximately six of each you know, six, you know, if you count them down, you, you have about six. Depends on the spacing and depends on what fabric or paper you use. But it's about six of each. Gosh, it's so quiet here at the moment. It's, 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 you know, when you've had a week of really, really loud noise outside <laughs> and it suddenly stops, you're kind of like, well, where's the noise gone? And <laughs> come back around here. It's as easy as this. I mean, it's this. I brought. I can remember buying this in the, in in, um, in 1990. I can remember buying this this map. It was before the days of sat nav, <laughs> you know, when you had to actually read a map. Um, and I've had it ever since because yeah, we used to live in Manchester. And it's dead funny when you're cutting it up and you suddenly see Stockport or somewhere like that. You think, oh, I know where that is. <laughs> won't go right the way down to the end because you'll be here till next Christmas and be, won't be able to get a start on but I'm sure you can see now how simple and easy it is to get these put in place you're just literally sticking a pin in and that's it and turning it around but as I say I would recommend doing the alternate sides first and then the other alternates because it does work out so much neater 
Um, a couple of the girls were doing them near me and one of them was doing the uh, just go round and round in circles and you could see where they start it starts to go wonky I've been making lots of scarves um there's a church just by Morrison's in Hoyk St Mary's they do quite a lot of craft events in there particularly for kids and um the lass who, who organizes them all um comes up to the group sometimes to see us and uh one of the lasses there Jean uh, I think she's got she's got to be in her late 80s I'm not sure of her exact age and uh, I've been given a world to help her because she's, she makes um, jumpers for third world countries. She makes lots of jumpers. And uh, I think it's amazing. And they go to this church and then they arrange them to go to where they need to go. You know, to the countries that they're going to. You know, they get them shipped out. And it's the same place that all these scarves are going to go to. And... I've not used Aruba wool and the Can Can wool in years. <laughs> and it's trying to get your fingers back to doing it because it's not like normal knitting. Um, I'll show you them in a minute. But my grandson come in. He's going to be 15 in January. And he saw the monochrome one and he decided that that was going to be for his girlfriend. So I'm going to be one down already. <laughs> Now, I'm hoping you can see now how easy and quick this is to do. Now, when you get to the top, you will have a wee square that's probably about an inch and a half left, you know, of the white. And you literally just take a piece of paper and you pop it over the top and you pin that down and that covers all your loose bits up, covers all your, your endy bits up. You may need to move one of your pins. If you can see your pin, you might want to move it. You don't have to. Nobody's going to really, really see. Um, if I show you on this one here, you can see. Yeah. Now, I actually um, tucked it in a tiny bit. I literally just folded in a tiny, tiny little bit like this. And I do the same on my fabric ones as well. Um, because it just looks, it just gave a nice finish. But it doesn't matter. You do not have to do this. You do not have to bend it over. But you can see it just gives a lovely finish. And then the top bit, you make your loop and pin your loop in, and then you make a bow and pin your loop, uh, pin your bow in. So there's no thought process on this at all. You just literally, oh, I've got a bit here. So this is what you use for your loop. You literally just hold it like that and what I did was I would I bent the bit at the bottom so that it wouldn't you know just in case it might fray and then I squashed this down like that and that's how I pinned it on and then when you lift it up it looks beautiful so quite I don't know how long that is I should have something here I can measure oh yeah look I've got my my hoogie board let's have a look uh that piece is like six inches for that bit and for the bow, I used, let me have a look, let's see how long that was, 12, that's 18 inches. So the bit for the bow is 18 inches. Now, I've, the 18 inches, you will be cutting probably about three or four inches off. Um, so I would say go for about 16 inches and then you won't be wasting quite so much. It was just, I just cut that length before I knew how big the bow was going to be. Now, obviously, if you want these to come right down to the bottom, by all means cut them longer. But I, I thought that length worked really well. And you can see it's exactly the same process. If I hold it that way, you can see where all that pattern are there and all that pattern come there. And then the top comes on here. And the same with here. It's the, the, the confusing thing is, because you're working from the bottom to the top, you start doing it and then you think you, you've got it the wrong way round. <laughs> and you think, 
no, 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 no. Just remember a pine cone that it all comes down <laughs> to the bottom. So that's your bottom bit there. So I'm going to make some more of these. And as I say, I'm sending one to Rachel for her, her tree. I will get that. I find a little box to pop that in. And I'm hoping that that will go with the tree. Um, I will find... Uh, it's Rachel and Bella Crafts. Um, I would have to try and find the video. If I can find the video of where she opens the first couple of ones, I will link it underneath here. Um, it, there was um, a couple of little shakers to go on the tree. Um, and there's a really pretty little angel. I've seen quite a few um, snowflakes, different ways of making snowflakes. Because originally I was going to send one of my um, crocheted snowflakes in. And... Uh, Doing this, I thought, no, I'm going to be, be a bit different. I'm going to send something completely different up. So that's just something completely different. But I have used vintage book papers. <laughs> so I haven't completely gone off the junk journaling side. And I've got, a, <coughs> I've got a journal here. Now, if I just hold that on there. Now, that's the big one. Yeah, I'm hoping you can see this. If I hold that there, that's the big one. So the big one's a little bit too big. So you'd need to go for like about a, um, a two and a half inch, six centimetre one. And it would look so lovely hanging from your spine. I mean, you can even hang it from the front, can't you? I mean, if you hang it from the front, it wouldn't really matter too much what size it is. But I thought they would look lovely hanging off of a journal as well. So let me move that back. So thanks for being here, guys. Um, now that the the noise is gone I can get back to doing my um videos because obviously I'm behind with videos because I couldn't do anything so I've got like these journals sat here and the December dailies with our Tracy and it's all just sort of like backing up on me here's my book uh, my box of December dailies I didn't do a smart box like Tracy with the handle on and cover it because these are all going to be going straight into a journal um, but some of the makes are absolutely gorgeous. They really are. This one I think is lovely because this is like a flippy out one that our Tracy did. Um, oops, I'll pop that in there. You've got your peepo ones. Look, you've got your tag and you've got your little thing in there. I just love this. I absolutely love that frame. I've actually used um, the Prima wax on mine. And they just look amazing. So get along to Tracy's group if you want to join in. Um, because you will be inspired. And even if you watch the videos, once the, the kit hits Etsy, you'll know what you're going to be doing with, you know, the idea of how to make them up is all there. Um, so have an amazing day, everybody. I hope you're getting well organised for the holiday season because it's that time of year where you're not sure whether you're ever going to get any sleep again, isn't it? <laughs> Love and blessings, everyone. Bye.